Rocha. I have been living in Goa now for over 15 years. I was born and raised in Dubai. I moved down when I was 18 and um, yeah, I, I moved straight into college. I studied at St. Xavier's in Mapsa. Then I thought that maybe I would uh, finish college, I'd become a teacher. I love the English language um, and that was something I thought that you know maybe I would do because as a literature major I thought I don't know, probably teach English or something like that. That was my original plan. <laughs> Nothing ever goes according to plan. But uh, I ended up getting into mass media. I met a friend of mine who uh, I knew from Dubai. In fact, he had moved down to Goa and he was uh, starting a radio station here. Thank you, 1.9 FM, Radio Indigo. So I he was like, listen, I just want you on board. I want you on the team. Uh, we don't know what we're going to do with you, but we just want you to be here. And so I joined radio, and that's how I got into radio in Vigo at the time. It's uh, still one of the more popular radio stations around. And I'm so proud that I was part of the team that kind of started it. And uh, to my good fortune as well, I got a chance to get on air. So I was in the station for about six months. I, would, I used to write ads, and I used to come up with uh, content ideas and, you know, stuff that we could do on air, like fun promotions or games and contests, you know, stuff like that. And then when our evening primetime presenter left, they needed to fill that spot. And so they kind of put me in there temporarily just so they could get somebody to actually do the show. But then the show took off, it was doing great. And they're like, you know what, just continue, you're doing a great job. <laughs> but I got an opportunity at that time to then work with uh, the Heart Rock Hotel and that was awesome. Um, like I was, I, I've been a huge fan of the hard rock brand for a very long time. And as a musician and as a, you know, as a fan of, you know, rock music, it was like a dream come true. And so even bigger dream come true is when, you know, they were recruiting here in Goa and I got that opportunity to work with them. So I joined them as something known as a vibe manager. So that's the guy who basically, you know, takes care of the music, the look, the feel, you know, of the property, um, curating the, the gigs, the shows. But I took it a step further because, you know, there were a bunch of people that I was working with. One of them in particular, uh, is a good friend of mine, his name is Jonathan. So he is, he was rather at the time, the training manager for the hotel. And we had jammed up a number of times. When I was in college and radio, we did a couple of gigs. We were, you know, we used to jam every now and again. And so he knew that I was a musician. I obviously knew that he was a musician. And just, you know, as a fun thing, I, you know, we were talking and I was like, hey, you know what, we should we should jam, you know, like like the, the, the hard rock has this thing where they have like these beautiful Fender guitars that they hang on the walls, actual working playing guitars with amps and everything. And if you're staying at the property, they have something known as the sound of your stay. And it's like a program where you get to basically make music while you stay at the hotel, right? So you can just ring up the front desk and say, hey, can you send a guitar to my room? And they actually have a menu with all these different guitars. And then I will show up at your room with these guitars and, you know, with an amp and hook it all up and you can play guitar in your room. And it's pretty cool. And if you don't know how to play, I would actually teach you how to play, you know, guitar, a few songs and stuff. And so I told him, I said, we have these amazing guitars and they're so beautiful. And we should jam sometime, you know, maybe just form a band or do something like on a Tuesday night or Thursday night. And one thing led to another. We found out that one of our front office executives was a bassist. We found out that one of our reservations guys was a drummer. He used to drum in his church. So I'm like, bro, we have a band, bro. <laughs> and so we actually ended up putting a band together and we used to play in the hotel like on Tuesday nights and Thursday nights, Friday nights and stuff. So uh, it was fun, like, you know, and I would schedule these bigger bands to come down and play at the hotel. We'd open for them. We'd play like a half an hour set. We did like two or three New Year's gigs at the hotel itself. Mad fun. maybe my second year working at the hotel, so that must have been in 20, 2017, I think. Just as I turned 30, um, I found out at that time that I had something known as chronic kidney disease. Now, I we didn't really know how bad it was going to be. 
because it's one of those things that um, kind of gets worse over time. So initially when I got diagnosed, it was more like, oh, you know, your levels are really high. You need to kind of control yourself with diet, things like that. And I did, I tried. But then um, about a year later, it got to the point where they said that, you know, it's uncontrollable now at this point. And the only um, solution to that is to do something known as hemodialysis. So yeah, so because of that, obviously that threw a wrench in the spokes because... You can't like do a regular job, right? Because um, at that time I have to go for dialysis in the morning, then go to the hotel in the afternoon, work the whole day through the night, and then get back home and I'm tired. And then the day after that, do it all over again. You know, go in the morning, do the dialysis, and start to get really stressful. It wasn't working out for the hotel as well because obviously I wasn't around when they needed me, I guess. And so they were like, been so awesome like I think I have the best family and the best friends like you know obviously my wife 100% um, she I mean it, it's not it's not easy right I mean there's a lot of uh, compromise that comes with a situation like this just knowing that like say for example we want to do a trip somewhere we want to go on a holiday it's not easy right because where am I going to do dialysis it's a life-saving thing you can't just be like oh, I'm not going to do it for two weeks I'll do it when I come back got to do it every second day so you know having to make those kinds of sacrifices she would come and sit with me at the hospital every other day wait for four hours doing absolutely nothing just waiting in the waiting area while I go through this process you know and those initial times were tough like obviously it's, it's not easy it's it's painful it's it's dreaming it's not it's not a fun thing right and so come home and then you know take care of me and all that stuff so now of course i've reached a point where like i'm used to it like i can handle it on my own and i don't really need her to be there all the time so she doesn't come with me anymore for dialysis which is great because now she has that time to do other stuff and be productive and you know work and all those things as well um of course my friends my family that was amazing and um Speaking of which, like even after I left the hotel, I needed to find jo a job, I needed to find work. And that's when I got in touch with my friend Adam. So you know Adam Fernandez as uh, the founder of Kilowatt. At the time, I mean, he had asked me to join the company a couple of times before. And there was always something that I was into and I wasn't ready at that point in time. But now I think when I needed it the most, he was just like, bro, <laughs> like, you know, we'll sort everything out, whether it's, uh, you know, your dialysis and you need to go, you go, you do what you need to do, you work on your own time. But, um, you know, there's always a place for you here. Um, you know, I love music. I love going for gigs and watching live music gigs. And, you know, a friend of his uh, mine had come down from Bahrain, he's a DJ, and uh, he was like, you know, let's go out and do something fun, let's go and catch a live gig, and I don't want to go to a club, and I don't want to listen to any other DJs, because he's a DJ. So he was like, let's go and catch some live music, and where can we go? And it was a Sunday, and I was like, where can we go on a Sunday and go out live music? And so I, I went online, I tried Facebook, I tried Insta, I tried a couple of websites. I couldn't find any good live music happening anywhere. And some conversations, I was speaking to another friend of mine, Tanya, I was like, yeah, it's so sad, right? I mean, this is no way to know what's happening. And we were just kind of talking about how cool it would be if there was like this page, like an Instagram page, where every day you go to it. And in their stories, right there, you just have all the different events that are happening. Like, how difficult would that be? And we're like, you know, fine, if it doesn't exist, we'll just make it ourselves. And to our luck, the handle live music Goa actually was available. Like, how much more karma do you need for that? <laughs> so we booked it immediately. I mean, we, we, we got the page and then we talked this through and we decided, hey, you know what, let's just, let's just do it. So now every, every day, every morning, we basically, so we follow a bunch of different, you know, artists. So Live Music Goa, unlike other aggregate pro, you know, portals, we don't um, track the um, 
hotels and we don't track the restaurants and the clubs and the pubs. We track the artists. So we're an artist first sort of a community where we try our best to promote the artists that are playing rather than the restaurant that has the artist. Because the question in Goa or the question is always, where can we go for live music tonight? Or who has live music? And we want to change that narrative. We want it to be, who is playing tonight? I think uh, without, without sounding too cliche, I think well, my parents are pretty awesome. Like I really look up to them. Uh, like, like growing up, it was a quintessential, um, you know, family story where, you know, um, mom and dad worked and, you know, all that, all that stuff like that. Had one of those jobs where he'd go there every day for like 25 years and did the exact same thing and come back. But, you know, I think everything that I learned about being a good person, about, you know, doing the right thing obviously comes from, and I think those are the important things. Like, you can be like, oh, my role model is um, Elon Musk because, you know, he's so accomplished and he, whatever. But I mean, for all the money and for all the success that you can have in the world, if you're just, if you're not a good person, it really doesn't make a difference, to be honest. You know, treating people with respect, you know, just doing the right thing. I mean, those are, those are the things you learn at a very young age. And I think the most important role model are the people that take care of you, right? So... Yeah, I mean, uh, my dad is pretty awesome. Uh, the respect that I kind of have, even for women, like I see how he's treated my mom, you know, growing up and, you know, the kind of unspoken love, you know, that kind of love. It's not the, oh, I love you and I will fawn over you every second of the day. It's, it's the little things, it's the holding the door, it's the cooking the food, it's the, you know, coming home on time, it's... You know, those are the things I think that are so important. You don't have to tell somebody all the time that you love them. It's stuff that you do to show them. So those are, I think, the, the important role models that I have. I said, you know, I needed to kind of take that stress out of my life and I just needed to, you know, work at my own pace. And so I said, I think it's about time I start doing something um, on my own. And, you know, I was like messaging, you know, a friend of mine, I was, you know, we were on this group and talking about stuff. And one of them was like, yeah, you know, sounds like a great idea. Like, you know, what do you call it? And I'm like, I don't know, something with M maybe. Like, and I was thinking of a name that started with M and, and that joke became, oh, something with M sounds like a cool name. And so I said, yeah, okay, cool. And that's how something with M was born. So basically I started this agency called something with M, which is, purely content. It's about um, anything to do with writing, right? So you have blogs that you want, I'm going to write them. You're a PR company and you need press releases, I'll write them. Websites, you need your content for your websites, I do that as well. In, even as far as publishing as well, you know, and consultancy for that, like, I know I've done three books now. The third one I just published um, 2021, I think, during the lockdown. The first one was Fallen. Fallen was released in 2012. Um, that was through uh, a publishing company here in Goa called Cinnamon Teal. They're based in Margao. So if you want to get in touch with uh, a, a publishing company here in Goa, you should check them out. Speak to Leonard and Queenie. They're very sweet. And they really, really helped me out in that time to get my first book published. Uh, the second and third one I published on my own online. Um, the second one is called Resurrection and the third one is called Cross Connection. So they kind of follow a pattern. So the first one is very dark. It's, it deals with regression, it deals with anxiety and depression and all those kinds of things. And then Resurrection, on the other hand, is um, more of an upliftment. It's what comes after that. It's the process of kind of getting through all of that and you know coming out of it on the other side in a more positive manner. And cross connection is more like a, almost like a combination of the two, but it's not. It's more spiritual, if anything. It's about, you know, finding that spirituality that kind of helps you maybe, or, you know, uh, you question it sometimes. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff happening in that book. There's some poems that are about like, you know, 
divinity and you know the greatness of divinity and then there are some poems that are about doubt and questioning that divinity and you know why me and you know because having been through you know like CJD for like six years you have questions right and sometimes you wonder why me and you know why did it have to happen to me of all people and you, you deal with all that stuff so a lot of that comes out um, in cross connection so I think I think that's I think that's one of the better ones out of all three um, so yeah they're all available on Amazon and Flipkart so if you want to go and you can also get them through my website which is marcosha.net shameless plug I think right now the idea is to kind of grow, um, you know, get more people on board so that I can take on more clients and do more written work. But I think the end goal for something with M would to get somehow into that publishing space. Um, I would love to be a publishing house at one point, maybe, you know, have our own publications, whether it's fiction, non-fiction books, it could be self-help, it could be any of that. But, you know, and, and not because, again, it's not about, oh, we want to sell books and make a lot of money. It's more about encouraging more people to write. Yeah, uh, be honest. Right? I mean, write honestly, write from the heart, write. Um, you know, write about what's true to yourself. And even if it's fiction. It doesn't have to be non-fiction. I mean, you don't have to write about your system. I'm not talking, I'm, I don't mean like write only autobiographies or write about personal stuff or write, you know, about like what's happening in your life. You might not have the most interesting life, but, you know, write honestly in the sense that, you know, don't try to copy somebody. Don't try to be like, oh, you know, uh, Chetan Bhagat is, you know, one of the big names in India and I need to write in his style if I want to be published. No, you don't need to. You, know, you need to be yourself, you need to be unique, you need to have your own voice, you need to find your own voice first and then you need to put that on paper. And sometimes the easiest way to do that is to just open a journal, open a book and to just write. You know, whatever comes to your mind, whatever you feel, whatever is in your heart, um, it's a great exercise. Uh, even if you are not a writer, but you want to be a writer and you're considering it, it's a great thing to do. Uh, definitely. The one thing I would definitely want is a kidney. <laughs> I'm not, it's not changing, but if there could be anything that I want right now, all I want is when I get back to the way things were, if I could go back in time, I'd probably go back six years and probably take better care of myself if I could, or just find out what the hell happened because we still don't know what happened and how it happened um, and you know what we could do to avoid it. So if there's anything I could change, it would be that. Uh, just so that you know, I could be a little healthier, a little better and not have to do you know dialysis three times a week.